We have waited with hope for God to bring justice and to make things right in the world. We have waited with peace for God's shalom to be felt. We have waited with joy, celebrating the things God has already done. We have waited with love, aware by how God has shown love to us. We light the previous week's candles of hope, peace, joy and love. sent into the world in the birth of Jesus. Let us pray. From God of hope and peace and joy and love, from that stable so long ago, your light shines out into every corner of the world. Help us to sing with the angels and tell the world, the whole world, the good news of your coming. Help us to live by your light, and not only today, but throughout the whole year, so that all of the world may see your light and receive your gift of Jesus. Amen. Uh, we're going to continue singing here. Uh, this is an absolute top band. Yeah. 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 Uh, this is a top row United Church classic, uh, The Cradle of God's Heart. Um, really mellow in the verses, but really builds to the glory of God in the chorus. So, I invite you to stand.
Morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Dante. If you don't know me, I'm the uh, children and family worker here at Tamara United. I might like invite all the kids to come up the front if that's okay. There's plenty of space. Even if you like to think you're still here. Go on that side, I want 
want to just recap, or you can pass them around if you want, but what's the talk as well? Make sure they go back to the older kids. Life. 
I also think that Christmas is a little bit about worship. And we've talked a lot about this in church over the last few days. Not far the last few weeks, I mean. It's, if you look at the Christmas story, every character in the Christmas story has a worship experience. And if we focus on worship at Christmas, somehow that might make a little bit more room in our Christmas for Jesus. But it's also a little bit about Giving. Oh, that's the shepherds down there because they worshipped at the, at, the, at the manger. So we've got up here, this is giving, this is the wise uh, people at the top here. And like they gave their gifts, but as John T. reminded, we were told that part of Christmas is giving of ourselves. Uh, like Mary said, I'm the Lord's servant. You know, may it be true with me. But it's also giving of the things that we. Uh, yeah, to, to the people we love, giving a little part of ourselves. I also think that Christmas is a lot about love. We talked a lot about this last night. That at Christmas time, we definitely feel the love of God shown to us through the baby and the manger. So just by looking at this at the different perspective, we now have room for Jesus.
if you missed the show last night and wondering what it's all about, it was recorded um, not just on the live stream, which is only off my dodgy camera. It was actually recorded off all the cameras that we had here. And we're going to try and... What? Put that on the DVD and sell it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Make it a moment. <laughs> to you um, uh, very soon. We're going to um, sing another song, and as we do this, we're going to take up the offering. Um, the offering on um, this morning's service um, is actually going to the Christmas Bowl, which is an ecumenical um, initiative uh, by all the major mainline churches. And the Christmas Bowl this year is mainly going to the Rohingya. Rohingya. I have not got that right yet. The Rohingya people. Uh, who should be in Myanmar but are uh, stuck in camps in Bangladesh. Um, and so this is our chance to remember people at this Christmas who are actually doing it really, really tough. And so we're going to take up our offering as we sing the next song. to help people most in need this Christmas. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Bible reading for today comes from, you may be seated, comes from the Gospel of Luke and is brought to us by the kids of Kids Church via video. Bye. 
last four weeks, we've actually been talking about um, the two different Christmas stories. I, I tried to illustrate it in um, that wonderful, magical, uh, mathematical trick that we did over there. Um, that idea that, that we have these two Christmas stories that we hold together. One of the, you know, the presents, the, the food, the consuming, the, the excessiveness of, of the consumer Christmas, which I'll say again, is not bad, but can distract us from the other story, the story that comes from the Bible. And sometimes it's a bit like there's so much mess that comes out of that first Christmas story. You know, our life becomes so messy that we miss the best gift of all, which is the gift of Jesus Christ. So I'm just wondering, in our Bible reading that we heard the kids read out so beautifully from Luke chapter 2, there are three things in that Bible reading that I think can help us sift through the mess and get back to claiming that best gift of all, that gift of Jesus. Um, if we go to the story, I'll skip over the first part of it because we all know it so well, don't we? The shepherds were washing their socks, the angels come down, they say that the Saviour's been born, they run off and they get to the Saviour. What did the shepherds do when they got to the manger? You heard the Bible reading. What did they do? Well, no, actually, we don't know. It's not in the Bible reading. If you have a look at the Bible reading, it says they arrived and then they left. There's nothing in the Bible reading about what they actually did when they were there. It just skipped one to the other. Now people frantically looking up Luke chapter 2 to see if I'm right. There is nothing to actually say what the, the shepherds did when they arrived. But I want to suggest that that answer about worshipping is probably true. Because, you see, the shepherds were caught between a rock and a hard place when it came to worship. Back then there was a technical law that if you handled the livestock, you became technically unclean, and so you couldn't go to the temple for seven days. But if you were a shepherd, you can't take a week off just to go to church, can you? And so, because of this silly technical rule, these poor shepherds basically never got to go to the temple, never got to go to church. And here in this moment, they were invited in to the very presence of their Saviour. After all these years of being excluded from church, I reckon they probably would have gone, we want to worship. We've been left out for so long, we want to worship in this moment. So maybe that's one way we can make sure that we don't miss Jesus in the Christmas, is by drawing near to the major and worshipping Jesus. Another way we can do it is, is to look at the response of Mary. At the end of our reading it said that Mary, after the shepherds left, pondered all these things in her heart. I don't think that sort of pondering is to be like, oh, I can't wait for this to be over. I actually think it was a, a, a really deep and meaningful pondering. This sort of stuff where, where Mary is going, I wonder what's God's doing in all of this. You know, God is certainly moving. God is at work. I wonder what's going to be next. And maybe that's a way that we can work about not losing Jesus in the Christmas, is to take some time out and ponder. Maybe that's a challenge for today. Can you do this sometime in the next, what, 18 hours? In everything that's going to be happening in the next 18 hours, can you take a moment just to sit or stand or find a moment of stillness and go, I wonder what God's doing. God's doing in this world. It's God doing in my life. I wonder what's next. And just ponder for a moment what God is up to. Lastly, um, I think that we can learn from the response of the shepherds about not missing Jesus in everything that's happening. After the shepherds came and saw the Saviour and worshipped the Saviour, what did they do? They just went back to their normal lives. They went back and they looked after their sheep. After going and visiting the Saviour, the messiness of their life was still there. And the shepherds just went back and stepped straight into it. It's a bit like that at Christmas, isn't it? We have all this energy and excitement and you know like last night was just thrilling in a week's time we're back to normal aren't we 
except for the cricket test will be on and we'll all be good. Now, it, it's just back to normal. The decorations get put away, and next thing we're thinking about is how to be prepared for the start of the school year. You know, it's, it's back to normal. But the thing about the shepherds is that even though they went back to their normal life and the messiness of being a shepherd, for them it wasn't normal. Something had changed. They were changed by that experience. Yes, they went back to their normal life, but they weren't normal anymore. It says that they went around praising God and telling everybody that they met about their experience of what they saw and what they had heard. For them, yes, they went back to normality, but they were changed. And maybe that is the challenge that we have after this Christmas experience, after the Advent experience we've had here, all those amazing reflections that we've had over the last 25 days, the experience of last night with the kids at the Christmas Eve workshop, this morning, how do we make sure that in a week or two weeks' time, things are not just back to normal, but somehow we go, that experience has impacted and changed us, that we're going to be able to keep living part of that Christmas experience. As we move forward, maybe the shepherds, when, you know, as I said before, they were excluded from coming to worship. They were a marginalized part of society. They were poor and looked down upon. Maybe their experience was because the reason why they were changed so much is because at that moment they were not excluded anymore that they were accepted at the manger. They found something that was meaningful that they could grasp hold of. We sang the last night of a holy night, and I used that line in my talk last night. When, the, when he appeared, the soul felt its worth. And it's almost a bit like that, that we, we feel our worth. We find out that we are loved and accepted when we come close to the manger. And maybe that's the most powerful piece of wisdom that we can find in all of this from the shepherds. That when we draw close to the manger, we do find that it does not matter what society has said about us. It doesn't matter what other people have said about us. It doesn't even matter what we've said about ourselves. At the manger, we discover this amazing truth that you, that you are loved. You are really, really loved by God. And then we discover that we're not alone, that Jesus promises that we'll never be alone. The word Emmanuel means that God is with us. God is with us always. And we discover that God did all this because we were worth it. Our soul feels its worth. Christmas can be messy. Especially when you've got slightly dysfunctional families and you're just about to head off to them to have lunch. <laughs> Not all of us. <laughs> Most of us. Um, Christmas can be messy. Life can be messy. But I encourage you to look beyond the mess and find the worth, the love that we find in Jesus, our Saviour. Don't miss this extraordinary gift that we can find sitting in the middle of all this mess. Don't miss the good news. This good news of Christmas, that is not just for today, but for every day. Amen. I think we're doing prayers. Thank you for being on the clock mode of the service. <laughs> we're going to have prayers and Eunice is going to lead us in that. Thanks, Eunice. Day in Bethlehem, Saviour, Messiah, Redeemer. Come, Lord Jesus, to reconcile us with you and with one another. In our world of darkness, faithlessness, hopelessness, and despair, come, Lord Jesus, to repair our fractured relationships, our damaged homes, our broken dreams, our lost faith. God of joy, author of life, and giver of light, Renew in us your Holy Spirit to enable us to live our lives as a worthy reflection of your grace and mercy, to build your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. 
in our community of neighbours near and far, we pray for those who grieve the absence of a loved one gone too soon. We pray for those who suffer injustice, persecution and unkindness. We pray for the sick, for whom the season is anything but festive or cheerful. We pray for those struggling with financial and emotional hardship due to circumstances beyond their control or as a consequence of their own actions. For those we name in our hearts and others besides, may your Holy Spirit bring comfort and healing and easing of burdens. May we be your helpers in doing our part to lift them up and to show them your love. God of peace, wonderful counselor, mighty God, in whom we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, equip us and enable us to be agents of your good news. Happy birthday, Jesus. We are so glad you came to reconnect us with God. As we celebrate with friends and family, with presents and feasting and parties, may we remember your gift of love and eternal life, humble yet powerful, born in a stable, defeating death on a cross to deliver God's promise of reconciliation and redemption. May the message of Christmas, of hope and joy and peace, Live in our hearts and minds, not just today, but every day, as we draw closer to you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is our final song for the service this morning. Uh, let's lift a massive shout of uh, praise and worship to our God uh, in all His glory with joy to the world. I invite you to stand. Thank you.